Hey, we're Becky and Chris from the YouTube channel, Becky and Chris. We make lifestyle vlogs, helicopter videos, home decor videos, photography and video tutorials. FPV drones. Oh yeah, drones. <laughs> we don't really have a niche, but we do like telling stories. Today we published a short film on our YouTube channel called The City That Changed Our Life. And the film is a bit about the perception of one's life through the lens of social media. In this video that you're watching now, we're gonna take you start to finish on how we created that entire film. And hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will have a better insight into what our process looks like for creating videos for YouTube. So for that video, we actually drew from our own experience and you guys probably don't know what happened to us. In a nutshell, we moved from St. John's, Newfoundland on the East Coast of Canada, all the way to the West Coast of Canada in Vancouver. We went there because I had to finish a final year of training for my job. I had a job lined up to come right back home to Newfoundland. Unfortunately, while we were there, that job offer got revoked. The overall theme was that my extracurricular activities appeared to outweigh my dedication to my primary profession. A lot of that I think was based on what people back home perceived through social media. That was kind of the impetus to make this film really show people that, you know, all is not lost. And even though it seems like a dark time, there's always a silver lining. Chris and I actually went back to Vancouver for the first time in four years. We didn't plan on making that piece until we were flying in an approach into Vancouver. And I was crying and I was like, I, I think like, we need to make a video. <laughs> it's exactly what you said. Well, now you know why we made it, kind of what happened to us. Now let's get into the actual making of the film. The first thing we're gonna talk about is story. So every good story has a beginning, middle, and end. So what does that mean? The beginning is kind of a tease of what's happening during that video. The middle is the plot. So as the story progresses, what's happening and then the end or the conclusion or how that story kind of wraps up. So that's kind of like the recipe, I guess, for a good story. Part of all of those pieces, the beginning, the middle, the end, there should be sort of an overall takeaway or a lesson that you learned or that your viewer learned. And I think in this video, the two points that we are trying to drive home were one, that your life in reality is far different than what it looks like on social media and two, that good things can happen from the darkest of times in your life. Writing a short focus statement for this film really helped us get our ideas together. So we had our story figured out, what the takeaway was. The next thing that we did was develop a storyboard. We wrote a couple of rough notes about what the video was gonna be about, a few talking points, and then I drew out a really terrible storyboard uh, on how that story was going to flow from start to finish. God, this is so embarrassing. This is my storyboard notebook. This is by a company called Plot Devices. You can find them on Instagram if you want to get one of these. For a graphic designer, I'm really bad at drawing. We're gonna look at the day in the life sequence because this is kind of just like an idea of what the flow is gonna be like. So 5 a.m. alarm, 5.30 sky train. This is to represent like a, a multi-clip sequence. So feet walking, getting to the hospital, prepping patients, consent. This is my, this is an arm holding a pencil, by the Wait, way. Why is there an arm here? but there's no arms here. Listen, as long as you understand the storyboard, that's all that matters. Your feet look like Subway sandwiches. This is on sticks because it's a tripod shot. This is a visual effects because this is gonna be an animation. So that's kind of like the day in the life sequence in terrible drawing storyboard form in my storyboard notebook. So I, I referenced this storyboard a lot when I was putting together the sequence. I couldn't remember exactly what I wanted to put where. So being able to reference this knowing, okay, I needed a close up consent, like a shot of the clipboard for the consent. I knew I needed to shoot that. Same with this, like I knew because I put these lines here on this one frame that this was gonna be a multi-clip sequence. So I knew that I didn't need only one clip, I needed like three to five clips for the sequence to make that work. And so that's kind of how my storyboard looks. Not great. I like it, I think it's really precious. So when you're developing a storyboard, you don't have to be a world-class artist. I'm not. <laughs> it doesn't have to be representative of what the final product's gonna look like. It's really just to kind of get a rough outline of the types of shots that you need. Next comes the narrative. This is not something we do all the time, but it's something that we did for this video. We finished the storyboard and then we went back and referenced the talking points and created sort of a voiceover narrative or script and then use that to sort of fill in the gaps and to pull the viewer through the story. So if you haven't seen the video, there's a drone sequence, a continuous shot of an FPV drone. Uh, and there's a voiceover that's timed perfectly with the events that are going on in that shot. So for that, we obviously had to script it and it made it a lot easier. And of course the vlog portion of the video was completely freestyled. No oh, talking yeah, points or anything. Yeah. It was just 
stri straight up documenting. Next thing that we did was put together the rough edit. You are the editor <laughs> in this relationship. I am. Oh, how the tables have turned. I crawled through a year's worth of footage from Vancouver. Crawled or trawled? Trawled, crawled, called? Cold. 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 I called through a year's <laughs> worth of footage. Words. Can't draw, can't write. Can't read. <laughs> Shut up. But I had my storyboard to guide me along, so I knew what clips I needed. We didn't know that storytelling was important, so we filmed absolutely everything. I had like my own custom like library of stock footage. Needed a shot of Chris walking with his medical bag, had it. Unlocking the apartment door. Got it. Multiple angles of the sky train, this train coming straight on, the, the train coming sideways. Got them all. A detail shot, got all of them. I pulled all of those clips into folders and I labeled all those folders. So everything in the project is organized by either date, camera, or scene. Now we understand that not everybody has been documenting their life at this point, then you're gonna have to compile a shot list and your storyboard will aid in that. On to the rough edit. We started assembling the film by putting together these mini sequences. And the main sequence of the film was that day in the life sequence. That was like the setup for the viewer to show them what life was really like and what life was like on the internet. And that set up the conflict where somebody would take that and misconstrue it. Once we had sort of a rough edit together, we realized that some of the scenes needed some more abstract B-roll, so you can go to the hospital and shoot these scenes. So we decided to shoot them here in the studio. Basement studio, faking the B-roll. We're shooting a couple of B-roll clips for our day in the life segment. We're gonna overcrank the shutter so we get that frantic high shutter speed look. I'm making an artistic creative decision. I'm trying to make a stressed out clip here. Okay, ready? Yeah, ready. And we just did kind of like close up abstract shots uh, to represent what he was feeling during those times in the day in the life sequence. So next is the music. A lot of people wonder, do you pick your music first or do you pick it after? And I don't think there's really a right or wrong approach. I think for us though, we usually pick it after because we're looking for a certain feeling. We Going back to that day in the life sequence again, we're talking about that a lot, but that was the main part of the video. We wanted something that was gonna be frantic, high stress, fast paced. And so we looked for a track to match that. <laughs> Doesn't it go like that? I don't know, I don't remember that. <laughs> and then secondly, looking at that FPV clip, we wanted something that was cinematic, emotional, that had build. And then we wanted that to kind of cut into a song that was a little more upbeat, that matched what was being said in the voiceover. Next came the voiceover, still audio, but this is where the story really came together. Even when we did that scripted voiceover of, of Chris talking over that FPV clip, we still recorded that in the same setup as the interview so that the mic sounded exactly the same. Little BTS behind the scenes here. We're in the drone factory. Got the key light here. Got the rim light slash hair light here. This space isn't really finished or treated at all. So we took some of the extra sound panels we made, put one here, put one there. And then also we hung blankets just kind of surrounding everything here. So getting clean audio is all about getting the mic as close to the source of sound as possible. So this is what the mic sounds like when it's close. And this is what the mic sounds like when it's just an on-camera Shotgun mics. Hear the difference? I know I do. <laughs> we lived two different stories in Vancouver, mm -hmm. so we wanted our stories to be differentiated visually as well. This is a priority angle for my narrative. Our main light here is the Aperture 120D with a giant newer softbox. So if I turn that off, this is kind of what the scene looks like. So we have a hair light up top, so this is with it off, this is with it on. That is with the key light on. In the background here, we have the Godox SL200W. We've got the Aperture M9 over here, just kind of spilling a little bit of light onto that plant. And we've done some sound treatment. So we've got some sound blankets all the way around with some sound panels around the perimeter of the mic and the camera. So this process of kind of shooting an interview and telling story after the fact is really helpful if your shoot is unpredictable. Doing kind of like a debrief interview style at the end to tell that entire story can really help pull your video together. So there were some events in the video that didn't have actual B-roll. Like how do you express somebody getting a job offer or losing a job? Without actually saying like, I got a job. I got a job. I lost my job. I lost my job. We figured it'd be an opportunity for us to break up the style a little bit and add some titles or some motion graphics, some animation and that was uh, just an alternative to using B-roll. So the final edit, we had all the pieces to the puzzle. So then it was just a matter of putting together those sequences and making
making sure that the scenes flowed from one scene to the other and that the pacing was right throughout the video. And then of course, the color correction and the color grading. We wanted to make everything look visually cohesive. Differences in coloring and in grading can actually invoke emotions. Uh, unconsciously in the viewer. So that's kind of what we want to do through the use of the story, the edit decisions, the, the music track, and the grading, all that in combination is what creates that feeling. So it's just a small part of the puzzle. So that's the entire process of making this film from start to finish. And essentially this is kind of the process that we use for every vlog, give or take some of the details. The most important thing to really remember when you're making videos is story is king. You can have the most beautiful B-roll in the whole entire world, but if your video doesn't have a story or doesn't tell a story or, or have some type of value, then nobody is going to watch it. Really to capture an audience and to capture the viewer, you have to have some sort of story that they get sucked into. A lot of times in our vlogs, we rely on comedic things that are happening to help bring a story along or to help tell a story. All it takes is one really simple idea and then just thinking through the beginning, the middle, the end, and the takeaway, and you can really make yourself a cool story. If you haven't seen the film that we've been referencing, uh, the link is probably in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to Music Bed's channel to see more in the YouTube Master Series.